Okay, so one viewer has asked me to disassemble this IBM 5251 keyboard. Um, I actually already have disassembled it, but I put it back together. Uh, I haven't disassembled it completely, so we're going to go ahead and tear it down right now. But first, um, while it's indoors, I'm just going to type on it a little bit. Well, you get the point. It's a click keyboard and it has tactile force. Uh, I'll post a link to some more information on the keyboard in the YouTube video info. But let's go ahead and get this thing taken apart. Okay, so I've simply turned the keyboard upside down and there's four screws that I have to remove. Here, 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 and here. So let's go ahead and do that. I really do find flathead screws annoying. Probably should have brought my socket set in, but oh well. Okay, let me switch hands here. and take care of these other two screws. And this screw here holds a solenoid for clicking against the keyboard, and this one holds the cable in place. Because they have some pretty serious grounding on this thing. IBM wasn't messing around when they built this keyboard. And the last screw. You'll notice that I'm able to just use an ordinary flathead screwdriver and there's enough clearance to get a regular socket in, none of the thin wall stuff that you have to do on a Model M. I'm not too familiar with the Model F so I can't say for sure what that uses. Okay, so I'll return once I get done um, removing that screw, and I'll flip the keyboard back up. Okay, so now the keyboard is ready for me to take the lid off, which is just as simple as that. And there is a date in here. I can't get it to focus, but it's October 22nd, um, and it's sort of faded, but it's 1979. So I'll just set this aside for now. The first thing you'll notice is there's a rubber shielding around everything in this keyboard. You sort of have to pull it aside to, and there's cl even clips on one of the stabilizer bars here that hold this rubber sheet in place. You'll see here's the solenoid that clicks against the case. Um, as I understand, whenever you type, this thing clicks um, when it's configured to click. It doesn't always have to click. I'm not going to do a complete disassembly today. I'm not going to take the keycaps off, and I'm not going to take the rubber sheet off, but I am going to remove the keyboard module from the bottom plate. Um, you'll see in the in here, the cable has a serious ground strap. Um, there's a little label here, CP Claire Canada Limited, assembly number 
EC number, I believe that's 835614, and the date is December 11th, 1979. So let's go ahead and detach this cable from the keyboard. Just two tabs here. Okay, and now the cable is detached. So at this point, we can remove the control PCB, which is two screws. And they're not in very tight. I still need to loosen them some, but they are somewhat longer screws. And here's the other one. These don't hold much together so they don't have to be extremely tight like the case screws. Just make sure the PCB doesn't move out of place. And I'll go ahead and unplug the solenoid. And start wiggling the PCB free of the large connector to the uh, keyboard PCB. And now, here's a 1979 IBM keyboard circuit board. You'll see that they use a lot of metal in the construction of this thing. So, next step is remove all of the screws. I believe those four are it that hold the keyboard module in place in the case of the keyboard. Unfortunately, I have to work around 31-year-old disintegrating rubber, but and I have not loosened these screws yet. Uh, I'll stop the video right now, and I'll come back when they're loosened. Okay, so now the screws holding the keyboard module in are loosened, and I did feel the keyboard module shift significantly, so it should just lift out. And you'll see that there's several screws holding this back plate on. I'll set this down, go ahead and remove them, and start back up when they're removed. Okay, so now the back plate is loosened, so just lifts off of here. And you can see the back side of the PCB. I'm not going to go any further because if I do, I can risk it becomes a lot harder to reassemble, but uh, as you can tell this is a capacitive PCB. Um, you can see the other contacts through the PCB. Um, it uses capacitive switching, so the capacitance is different when the key switch is making contact between the contacts and when it's not. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put it back together and then I'll upload this video. Uh, thanks for watching.